Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to, uh, well, the last two days. Uh, today is the last session for Moodle MOOC 3, and tomorrow is the final session. It's the final day of the month. Today is February 27. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and you can see Dr. Phil and uh, Harris and Antonio up there, but it's really Nellie Deutsch. Uh, this session was postponed and uh, changed because um, the previous presenters could not present. So I hope you got the right information. It is about online instruction and learning, but with a little twist because it's about organizing a mega Moodle course. All right, if you could have in the chat box where you're from and what you're doing and how you're doing. You know, I really, really uh, respect you for uh, coming to these sessions, doing all you can for learning. I, I do a lot of uh, reflections and think about the fact that it's not easy to uh, join online classes. I think Susan mentioned a very important aspect and that is that we forget. We forget that there is an online class um, and we do need reminders. I get a reminder on my cell phone 10, and, 10 minutes before it starts uh, letting me know by voice, Susan. So I know you don't have an Android or an iPhone, a smartphone, but maybe you should get one. Uh, hello, Carol, because it actually tells me uh, by voice that the name of the session, everything that I add to Google Calendar. Now, if you don't have a Google Calendar, I think that you can use other calendars uh, such as Microsoft or um, a Mac calendar called Cal and so on. All right, so we've got Grace from Argentina. I hope the weather is not too hot down there in South America. Uh, we all wish that it was <laughs> it were hot in North America, but um, it will get hot in the summer, I am sure. And we've got Monica from Venezuela. So, uh, all right. So these are the presenters. Um, every one of them has presented, and uh, the only one left is uh, me. Okay, and this is me. Uh, Nellie Deutsch, a little bit about me. I've been teaching forever. I, I laugh about it, but um, I think I started teaching when I was under the age of five. Um, and I think we all have, because what is teaching? It's just sharing information. And we all played that game when we were uh, in kindergarten sharing information, sharing what we know. And it's really exciting to be able to do that, to share what you know, which is why we're all teachers. Uh, no matter what, even as learners, we like to share. So uh, best for the last, and that's very sweet of you. Um, so this session is about the free online courses, the mega courses. And uh, the courses are Moodle for Teachers that get a lot of participants, and they have been um, packed uh, with participants, uh, both uh, Moodle experts who want to know how to teach um, training courses online and face-to-face -face and blended. So they join administrators who want to learn more about Moodle, even though they're supposed to know everything. Uh, so that's Moodle for Teachers at different levels. And the current one that just uh, finished last week was Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014. It was supposed to only have English teachers, but teachers from around the globe joined. And uh, it was really exciting to uh, learn with and from everybody. The current one, which is ending tomorrow, is Moodle MOOC 3. Uh, there'll be three, there are actually three uh, Moodle MOOCs a year. One in June, it started, the first one ever in the world uh, started in June 2013. So there's one in June, October, and in February. 
So that's uh, exciting. And you can see everybody's clapping. So this is the, uh, the Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014. I'm going to show you what I do. Okay, I'm going to share how you can do the same thing. In other words, um, it's very easy to create mega courses. Mega courses are courses with a lot of people. Some people call the MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, but they're not really MOOCs because Massive Open means that it's open, not only to uh, the participants, but the way it's arranged is open, which means that there's uh, very little facilitation in the MOOCs and it's um, the learner's responsibility to connect with people from around the globe. You heard uh, Stephen Downs talk about it in Connecting Online, and you'll hear this from Dave Cormier, who um, explains it really well, and you can watch this on YouTube. So the MOOC is actually completely open, and it's really scary because most of us are not really able to uh, uh, learn that way because we're scared but it the openness uh, makes it very very difficult for many people so the uh, moodle for teachers evo 2014 was actually a mega course because there were a lot of people but it was a course it was structured uh, it had facilitators it had support is tom here with us today i mean right now i'm not sure i think his connection is probably not as good right now uh, at this hour, uh, you had support uh, for the participants 24 7 practically, which means that everyone uh, was responded to uh, quite quickly. All right, so um, I'll be talking about the course. So, this session, uh, I'll be showcasing uh, Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014, which was a Moodle 2.5. By the way, the next Moodle MOOC will be Moodle 2.6. So that should be exciting. And uh, the Moodle for Teachers Evo, for those of you who are not English teachers, um, was TESOL affiliated. TESOL means teaching English to speakers of other languages. And it was also part of the Electronic Village Online, which started um, over 10 years ago, actually. The focus will be on the organization, how I organize the course, the layout, and some of the merits and challenges of Moodle for Teachers Evo. I'll be discussing the resources. By the way, how many of you know what resources are on Moodle? If you can give me a thumbs up for that. What are resources on Moodle? Very confusing because there are different words for different um, things, for the same thing actually. In, in WizIQ, resources is actually the courseware. Courseware is the resource on WizIQ. Okay, so, and that's where you get the content as well as the live classes. Uh, so Moodle has its own um, way of calling things resources. Uh, let's see what you remember. What resources do you remember? Okay, this will give you a chance to see uh, what you remember. So um, try to name a few resources, put them in the chat box and uh, enjoy your uh, sustained learning. See what you remember. I'm going to have my coffee. Excellent. <laughs> right, IMS content. Excellent. Very good. Right, you got them and the score. Very good. All right, so the resources, if you had to describe them, uh, you'd probably say content. Okay, what we, the things that we use for the activities. Okay, activities, there are a lot of activities on Moodle. Some of them uh, you need to add to the Moodle because they don't come with a Moodle. Some of them even cost money, by the way. There are activities that cost money, like WizIQ, uh, live classes, or uh, Adobe Connect. Or uh, what else is there? Uh, Blackboard costs money. They're not free activities on Moodle. So that's something to keep in mind. So um, 
examples, Mizba, of um, activities on Moodle. Okay, I'll put an A so you can start there after the A. Activities. Activities are things that students do with the content or with something. Okay, whatever. And there are a lot of activities. Okay, there are at least a... Um, right assignments or activities uh carol there are different kinds of assignments you're right uh, by the way poodle needs to be added doesn't come with uh, moodle and it's not that easy to add um you know it may seem easy but it's not for most teachers feedback um is not part is not an activity it's actually a block mind maps glossary that's right oh that's nice there helena you got them all in there <laughs> excellent okay so for those of you well who did the uh uh the uh, artifacts or the video tutorials and so on you probably remember these things a lot better and then there are the blocks okay the blocks can be put on the left or the right of a moodle course and the blocks um come with Moodle. As a teacher, you may never see them. As a manager or administrator of a course, you will see them. Okay, if you're a manager of a course, you will be able to see uh, the blocks. The blocks can go from HTML that you can add. Um, other blocks, I'll put a B, see what blocks you remember. Wow. Where are the blocks, <laughs> uh, Helena? Um, there's a lot of stuff there, but where are the blocks? Okay. Um, yeah, these are different things that I have. Not everyone has login. Okay, so these are blocks. Thank you, Helena. A page, actually, you see there's a problem here because a page is not a block. It's a resource. An activity is not a block. Okay, there's a there are a few um, issues here that Moodle should take care of. Uh, activities are definitely not blocks, but you can add uh, the activities that people use, and then you can see them on the left or the right. Okay, so that's the idea. Latest news, of course, is a discussion form. It's not really a block. But it's in the block. So notice what's in the block. You can put different things in the blocks if you know how to use, how to code uh, Moodle. And then, of course, um, I'll be talking a little bit about enrollment methods. We talked about that enrollment methods, how you can enroll students. And uh, I'll show you how to create courses. I'll also give you uh, some behind the scene tricks and tips on how to organize and facilitate a mega course. So that's a lot of stuff in a short um, hour. We may have to go over time. All right, so if I don't take care of it today, I'll continue tomorrow. All right, so what do you see in front of you? Uh, any ideas? Anybody recognize it? I'm saying showcase, but that has nothing to do with um, if you want some hints, you can take a look at what you see and maybe you can figure out what it is. So what is that? That's right, Ms. Ba. Uh, they are slides. The word blog is a contradiction. That's right. Uh, that's right. That's right, Helena. There are lots of contradictions, lots of problems. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> um, because... You know, the people who create uh, all these programs are not educators. They're, you know, sometimes I think they're not really that educated. They're not very academic. They're not educated in the sense that they know these the terms that we use as educators. So um, they don't know much about pedagogy. So they, they just make up words. And then the confusion begins. Okay, for teachers, because teachers have to use these uh, uh, confusing words. All right, so any, um, it's a Moodle for Teacher course, but 
actually these are slides okay and this uh, these are the front the first slides okay this is uh week one of the evo week two and week three and these were created on google drive okay so google drive is a big part of how i organize mega courses actually that's how i organize anything all my live i mean all the, con the online conferences, everything I do actually, I uh, plan and organize on Google Drive. Okay, that's where I begin. So for organization, I use Google Drive and then I move on to whether it's WizIQ or uh, the Moodle. Okay, so this is actually a Google Drive syllabus. The syllabus I create on Google Drive. Feel free to ask questions as we go. If you don't know what a Google Drive is, don't feel bad if you don't understand something or if you don't know a word. It's not because you don't know English. It's just these are terms. If you think of Google Drive, why is it a drive, really? Okay, so feel free to ask questions. Every question is good because that's the only way we learn, actually. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Uh, this is... Any guess what this is? Anybody recognize it? Anyone? Thank you, Alina, for adding links. We'll be able to copy the chat at the end. Celeb. That's right, Hassan. Very good. That's right. It's a syllabus. But why is it organized like this? And this is why I love Google Drive text. Okay, I'm talking about the text now before we had a PowerPoint. Um, in the previous slide, okay, that's uh, a text. These are PowerPoint slides. Okay, so anybody know what these are? They're links. Yes, that's a good guess, Hassan. Excellent. You're getting closer, getting warmer, but actually it starts with a T and it ends with an S. Anybody know what it is? Two words. Oh, actually, no, it's three words. Three words. Let's see if somebody can guess what. I mean, if you take a look at it, you know, does it remind you of anything? If you click on it, you do go somewhere. Not here, but on the Google Drive. I could share it with you. Any ideas? All right, I won't keep you in suspense. It's a very good alexia got it oh i'm so glad uh, i am so glad very good alexia that's right it's a table of contents anybody have a link to this um syllabus at your fingertips and then you can look at it and you can see how the table of contents uh, works excellent let me check if that's the one Okay, I'm checking. Yes, perfect. Excellent. Well done. Yes, um, that's a table of contents. Exactly. All right. Another place that I use besides Google Drive, these are the two tools that I use. I use Google Drive and I also use WizIQ. And um, anybody know why I use both? Actually, I use drive google drive to plan that's where i plan things and then uh, with iq and then the moodle and then back to with iq that's right for the live classes very good but also for the course okay the course area because moodle uh is on a temporary server in other words it's a course in a moodle website moodle installation that is temporary okay after the course is over we uh, archive it or delete it we delete courses okay we can also back up courses and uh, with iq is a place where i can store okay i can store the course on WizIQ, which is why I do it. Okay, so we can continue um, 
with the course. And I'd like to ask you, this is a quiz. Um, what is number one? Okay, so, oh, very good. I see Helena's ahead of me. <laughs> uh, that's right. Number one is the course feed. And um, notice what's under courseware. Okay, you can add a lot. This is what I can do as a teacher. You don't see this, but if you create a course on WizIQ, and I highly recommend it, I suggest you create a course. It's very, very simple. And uh, you can go from here to the Moodle. So what you do is you can add a live class in the courseware, which is like resources or content. You can add content, and the content includes PowerPoint presentation, PDF, audio, video, um, okay, text, but not images. And then you can also add a test. Primitive, but you can add a test. And you can add an assignment. A lot of people did their assignments here. So WizIQ has a course management system that's very, very primitive in the sense that it's really simple. It's not, it doesn't track, it doesn't do what Moodle does, but it's a place to keep people aggregated okay and this is where uh, we can have discussions as helena mentioned in the course feed okay so number two this is a reason to have such a place where all the participants can join and then you can number two add announcements anybody know what number three is number three anybody know you know, as teachers, it's really important that we get acquainted with whatever is in the course that we take so that we can help our students later on. So uh, what is it? Seating? Uh, it's editing. That's where you can want in number three, you can decide if you want notifications or not notifications. And if you want to leave the course, it's a place to leave. Okay, if you want to leave the course, you open it up and it says leave and you can leave. Okay, and then course learners and so on. Number four, you can share the link, okay, in your social networks. So if you have a course on WizIQ and you want to charge money and you want to advertise the course, market it, uh, you can do it using the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google+. Number five is about the course, and this is where you can add information about your course. And number six, you can add videos if you want. That's right. Sharing is caring, but it's also a way to make money. Somebody mentioned the live classes. Um, these were the live classes, and uh, there were six live classes one for each week, and we added an additional one. The uh, course, Moodle for Teachers Evo, ended on February 16th, but we went on uh, for another week to do the showcase, and we did that on the 22nd. Uh, this, excuse me, this is, uh, it was on Google Drive originally, that's right, it was on Google Drive, and then I added it to the Moodle. And that's a very good question, Monica. Thank you for asking. Because all you need to do is copy. You copy this and you simply paste it in the Moodle, which is really wonderful because you don't have to hyperlink anything. You paste it as is. And that's what it comes out, like a table which is really nice, okay? So keep that in mind. Whatever you add to Moodle, you can add it as is, and all the links will be hyperlinked. So it's a very good thing. Uh, this is the Moodle area, and this is uh, the front page. This is where um, participants can get free Moodle training. All the training in the Moodle for Teachers Evo is completely free and will be free forever or as long as um, I have control over it. Okay, so it's moodleforteachers.org, and uh, that's where you can get, if you're interested in getting Moodle courses, 
that will always be free there. If you want to pay for courses, um, there are paid courses, but not here. Okay, and another a website. And if you're interested in paid courses, uh, this is uh, a website where you can get where you can pay for courses. Some people want to pay because they feel that um, it caters to their needs and they don't have to go uh, with others or follow others. Okay, and so there it is. I think that's um, the right one. No, I think I made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, it's without the www. So let me get that. Okay, without the www, sorry. Okay. It'll take you there anyways. Okay, now let's compare the two courses. Uh, this course is called Moodle MOOC 3. Okay, every Moodle MOOC has two parts. There are the live online classes um, that may be related to Moodle, but they're not related to the Moodle for Teachers course. Okay, so let me show you how the two compare and then I'll discuss uh, the value of having a course such as Moodle uh, for Teachers. I think I made a mistake there. Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014. I forgot the T. Um, the two, the courses started, um, one started in January, one in February. Uh, the Moodle for Teachers Evo was five weeks. The Moodle MOOC is only four weeks. Uh, the Moodle for Teachers Evo is only for beginners, while the Moodle MOOC 3 and Moodle MOOC 4 will be for uh, Moodle for beginners and Moodle for non-beginners. Uh, in the, there are six, actually not seven, there were six live online classes on Moodle for Teachers, but there were 30 live online sessions unrelated to Moodle for Teachers. Now I want to stress this unrelated because I think it's really, really important. Um, from what I noticed, um, the fact that they are, <clears throat> excuse me, unrelated, okay, makes a huge difference in the number of participants. Okay, so uh, in the Moodle MOOC, the live classes were unrelated to Moodle for Teachers. Both uh, courses had tabs, both courses related to um, resources, same topics. Now the differences are here. In the Moodle Evo, there was a teacher practice area. In the Moodle for um, Moodle MOOC, there was a Moodle for Moodle practice area. And the difference was this. In the teacher practice area, Carol, you might find this interesting, there were fi over 500 practice areas. So everybody was having a good time adding their videos and adding and adding and adding and adding until it got really, really slow. It didn't crash, but it got really, really slow. Okay, so uh, having so many teachers in a sandbox or in a practice, teacher practice area slowed everything down. Everybody was going nuts. Okay, so in Moodle uh, MOOC 3, there was a Moodle practice area where participants would practice and delete after they uh, got their screenshots. Okay, and I think that um, this is an important, important difference uh, between uh, the two courses. Another difference is um, well, actually, both of them had Moodle for managers where they would practice, get a screenshot, and delete. Okay, and of course the weekly badges, but with a difference. For the Moodle for Evo, no certificates, but for the weekly badge, for the uh, Moodle MOOC 3, there are certificates. But the certificates are not for the Moodle, they're for the live online classes. Okay, um, other differences between the two, the Moodle for Evo and the Moodle MOOC 3, there were 21 tutorials. Okay, you can see seven classes and uh, two assignments. 
and there were over a hundred, hundreds actually, hundreds of participants in the EVO course, but only tens of participants in the Moodle MOOC 3 Moodle course. And there were 30 tutorials and 30 classes. The question is, why? Okay, that's the biggie. Why? Okay, why were there more active participants in Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014? Uh, did the sound go? I don't see the sound going. So, what engages participants? What engages them? Oh, you can't hear me? The voice comes and goes. Oh, it seems to be fine um, from what I can see. Is it okay now? Um, Ajara Has ah, Hassan, you're having problems and you're using um, the desktop. Nelly voice is breaking. Uh, it doesn't seem to be breaking from, I can see it going up and down. Um, maybe try to refresh, Helena. Oh, is it breaking? But I can see that it's not. So let me uh, check again, check my device settings. Uh, it seems to be fine. But you know what I can do? I can take away the video. Maybe that'll make it better. Is it better now? Oops. Is it better now? Oops. Okay. Again. Is it better? And this, no, I took away the screen. No cam. Yeah, I took away the cam. Is the sound better? Just let me know in the chat if it's uh, any better. No, I took away. I took away the webcam. Is the sound better? Is the sound better? I see it's really good. So I'm not sure. No sound. Are you kidding? Uh, so refresh your page. Refresh. I can see the sound going up and down, so it's kind of weird that like nobody's hearing me. But uh, the recording will prove that there was sound. The recording will prove that there was sound. Oh, is it okay now? Because uh, I can see it going up and down. Oh, you hear me now. Well, um, okay. So um, let me continue. If you don't hear me again, let me know. All right. So what engages participants? What is it that engages participants? Great. I'm glad. So the question is, can you see the whiteboard? What engages participants? Okay, I'm going to give you um, rights, okay? I'm going to give you rights so that you can write on the board what, what engages participants. But don't move the slides, okay? What engages participants? If you can write, go to, use your keyboard, okay? What engages participants? Okay, can you write that, Grace and Carol? Can you write that on the whiteboard? I've given you um, writing tools, so you should be able to do that. Excellent. I can see some great ideas there. Uh, maybe I can um, simply add these. Ooh, not a free hand. You can use your, you don't need free hand. You can go to A, there's A there, it says text. If you go to the left, uh, BA, whoever wrote BA, you can go to the left, there's an A, and then you can add, you can make it larger. If you go to the A, the A is just um, over here, there's the A. You click on it, on the A, and then you bring it to the whiteboard. Click on the A and bring it to the whiteboard. Okay, it's really a lot of fun. 
click on the A and bring it to the whiteboard. Okay, click on the A and bring it to the whiteboard. Sorry about that. <laughs> click on the A and bring it to the whiteboard. Okay, what engages the participant? Knowledge. In other words, you mean content. Learning engages them. Just the fact that they're learning badges, certificate, participant. Yeah, uh, they're interested. Okay, what keeps them busy is what I'm asking. You know, what keeps them busy? I think everybody has tools. Except for Helena. Helena, I just gave you. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to take away your tools. Okay, and one, you'll see how I do this when you see the recording on YouTube or Vimeo. Okay, I just took back your writing tools so you can't write anymore. All at once. Okay, thank you. That's great. Okay, let's continue. Um, what happened there? All right, so the first, let me just uh, see. Okay, we've got yours in the back. Asking questions. Okay, did anybody write asking questions? No. So, what engages participants? One, asking questions. Anybody? Oh, the voice is breaking for you. I'm sorry, Helena. It seems to be fine. I can see it going up and down. Um, I'll try to maybe. Oh, I know what. Okay, let me. Um, is it better now? I'll hold it like this. Is it better? Oh, it's fine now. You know what I did? I changed my, uh, you can see what I did. I changed my head. Instead of being on the right, on the left, I put it back on the right. So I hope it's okay now. All right. So I guess I talk to my right. Okay. Asking questions is really, really important. Getting participants to ask questions forces them to stay engaged. It also arouses curiosity and it motivates. So asking questions is key in uh, engaging participants. So get your participants to ask questions. Force them. How do you force Q&A? How do you get participants to ask questions? What do you do? You don't ask them questions because they're going to ask, because they're not going to ask you questions. Okay, how do you get participants to ask questions? Well, first of all, you put a support form. By putting a support form everywhere, you force them to ask questions. You also force them, if it's part of the uh, badge, to get them to ask questions. You also leave things unfinished. You don't tell them everything. Because if you tell them everything, they're not going to ask questions. If they're not going to ask questions, they're not going to learn very much or they're not going to remember very much so it's key yeah given <laughs> that's not difficult task but force them don't tell them everything leave some information out that's the trick ladies or and gentlemen next is exploring get them to explore everybody likes loves to explore why why do people like to explore what happens when you explore? First of all, you explore because you want to know. And then you learn. Exactly. So exploring is really, really important. Next, and somebody mentioned that, I think, um, who mentioned? Grace, did you mention about watching others, your peers? Okay, your peers were doing things and you're watching them. So watching your peers is a way to learn. Watching others. And then, of course, peer and instructor support. Support is really, really important. Okay, it's really important for us to support our students 
and get our students to support one another. Exactly, Grace. You learn because you got support from your friends, from your peers. And this is really, really important. It's not enough to get support from the teacher because you de become dependent on your teacher, on one person, on the expert. It's not a good idea to become dependent on an expert because you need your independence and freedom to explore and learn on your own. And if someone's always telling you the answer, you're not going to remember it. Okay, so yes, Monica, helping one another is really... So these are the things that engage, asking questions, exploring, watching others, and support from your peers and your instructor. Exactly, Alexia. That's why we want to get our students excited about learning. And next is what um, Carol mentioned here. Carol mentioned videos and uh, creating videos. Okay, these are sometimes called artifacts. Artifacts are things that we create as a result of learning. Could be reflections or whatever we learned. You'll love it. A eh? screencast o matic is a gem. It truly is a gem. I don't know how teachers can get on without it. Yeah, so videos are amazing. How many of you um, were able to create videos with screencast o matic <coughs> Okay, at first, it's scary. Okay, it's scary. But once you get the hang of it, you forget that you are ever scared. But it's true. The first time is scary, like anything else. But when you take the plunge, you can only benefit. So creating screencast video tutorials is a very important way of learning. <coughs> okay? important to the learning process and to remembering. When I talk about learning, I'm actually referring to sustaining information and being able to do something with the information. You got nervous the first time? Yes! You know, and, and I'm really, really proud of everyone who tries because once you try, you become an expert. It's different, but it's very, it's, I think it's very teacher friendly, if you know what I mean. Very teacher friendly. Once you get over, you know, the uh, initial fear of using Screencast-O-Matic. And there is fear, okay? Next, of course, is the second place, or maybe first place for you guys, I don't know. Uh, and that's move note, which is very different. I think Carol, you asked what's the difference between move note and screencast o matic And they are different because move note does not allow you to share your screen and go through it. Okay, it doesn't allow you to talk as you go through your screens. Okay, it's uh, a bit more static. You add PowerPoint presentations, or you have to add, upload a file, and then you can speak. And you can't really share it on YouTube or Vimeo. Okay, but it has a new feature, so I suggest this is the latest. Um, and it is, it's presenting your documents with video. It's not sharing the screen, only documents. Okay, and I think this is key here. The key difference between the two is the fact that you share documents and not screens. Okay, so you need to upload them and then you speak. Okay, so it's a bit different, but I think uh, it has another purpose and it's good. 
And that's it. No, that's not it. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do now is I wanted to do some screen sharing and show you the process. Are you ready? Because I'm not sure whether it's going to work or not, but I'm going to do my best. All right. So um, I'm not on a desktop, even though I tell you to get to use WizIQ desktop. And the reason is, uh, I think it's all frozen. Hmm. What's nice about, uh, I hope you can hear me now, right? It froze for a second because I was screen sharing. Oh, no, I can't screen share. Almost and not quite. Um, it looks like it's not going to work. It almost did. It gave me all the indications that it was going to do it, and then it didn't. Hmm. So um, it looks like it's not going to work. Uh, let me try one more time. Yeah, it was pretty close. No, it's not coming. Um, it's not going to come because um, I'm using a Mac. Oh, it is coming. You're right. It worked. Thank you, Helena. I think you gave us good luck here. Very good. All right. So let's... Um, Let's, uh, I hope you can see it now. Okay, uh, right now, let me go into, uh, okay, there it is. I'm just going to make this larger because I'm also using Camtasia. All right, so first of all, all right, let's go into the courseware that I was showing you. That's the courseware, but I'm going to start off with um, with Google Drive. Okay, I just have to watch the time because we only have about 13 minutes and then we'll get timed out. All right, so first thing um, I do, I did actually, was um, I created a document, okay, and um, I want to show you how it works through a a blog, a spring blog festival, okay. This is a festival, a blog festival that um, I'm organizing, and in order to make it more interesting, I invited two other people. I invited Sylvia Ganen and Shelly Sanchez Terrell. Now, what I did was this. First of all, I created this um, Google Drive text document. Okay. And then I created a presenter form. Okay. This is the presenter form that I created so that uh, presenters can send their proposals. Okay, so this is the form. You see edit because it's me, but this is what they need to fill in. Okay, their name and so on, and then they send it off. And then I get the information. Okay, so that's the proposal to present. Once they do that, they're able to add Okay, I added the um, the festival is from March 14 to um, March 16. And uh, I'm going to show you, it's going to start at 9 o'clock. Okay, there's the first. And what I do is this, I break it down into the date and then I put the hour. I add um, a time announcer. So that people can see their times around the world because it could be confusing otherwise okay so this is what i do this is 9 a.m eastern standard time but if you live in another part of the world okay shanghai it's nine in the evening boston it's nine in the morning also oakland um is 
2 a.m. In other words, this way the participant can see what time it is in their area. In addition, the presenter's name, this is the presenters add this themselves because I share the document, I make it public for certain people and allow them to edit. Okay, you can see that they can edit. Um, and then I'm going to add the link over here. So the description, the name of the presentation. So there's Shelly, there's Sylvia, they've added their names. There's Cheryl Lentz, she hasn't added a description yet. And then there's Tara, Maria. Okay, I need to add um, Maria's link here, Aviva. Okay, Karen Bloomberg. Okay, these people, Ricky Shetty, who's a father who does blogs. He talks about parenting as a father. There's Sue Watt. Okay, and then, okay, this is uh, Nancy Zingrone. She doesn't have a description yet, but notice I already have her link. Okay, I already created a class. The link is active already. Okay. And then there's Crystal Brody. See, some of these people still have to fill in certain parts. Ludmilla has to fill in the description. Okay, so all these people have added their descriptions. You're invited to add yourself. What I wanted to show you was, these are the headings. So they're all the same. I'm going to go into the spring blog area. So you can see what I did. So I created and organized the uh, Google Drive. I created a course on WizIQ. Okay, this is the link to the course. I'll take it so I can share it with you. And um, notice here is the first one. Uh, the two blogging. Okay, and I'll be creating more. I wanted to show you that I have an organization account, which means that I have teachers. Okay, I can add teachers. So if you want to present, I will create an account for you. Okay, there's Charles Goodger. I have teachers here, and then I can create classes with his teachers. So if I want to create, schedule a live class, I can add the teachers that are on my list. Okay, here are all the teachers. You don't, you've never seen this before. So I create a class uh, for a teacher and then I put the teacher in my account and then the teacher's name, where is it? The teacher's name will appear. Okay, and these are the list of teachers and I can add many more. Okay, and then I make the class public and so on. So I just want to show you that you can do exactly the same thing. You organize your course and then on Google Drive you create and you bring all the information and let me show you about the course. This is the spring blog. Okay, so this is all the information about the blog course, blog, the highlights, and then you have the same thing that I have there, spring blog area, proposal to present, and the presentations. And then I added the three teachers, or the three uh, organizers of the festival. So far, we only have 60 people, but I'm sure this is going to be uh, much more than that. We just have to market it, and we have about two weeks to do that. So let me go back into the live class. But before I do, and I've got six minutes, I want to take you to the Moodle. Okay, I want to take you to the Moodle site, Moodle for Teachers, that I'm sure you all know anyways, and show you, okay, what it looks like because it's going to change. I also want you to look on top here uh, and go to 
these other areas here, this IT for all courses, um, where you may watch, wish, oh, there's WizIQ telling me that I have five minutes before the class closes. Okay, this is a place where you can um, take courses. Okay, these are some of the courses. You can take courses for a fee. And there's also this one, okay, which is the International Writing Exchange, which is completely free if you're interested in joining us in September. All right, so let me go back to class. Okay, so we don't get timed out. Let me extend it a little bit. There we go. And stop screen sharing. All right, so the screen sharing I hope worked. If not, you'll be able to see it in the recordings. All right, so that's basically what I do with each of the uh, courses. As I said, I go to Google Drive, I organize there, either alone or with somebody else. I get presenters or I share um, the information there, the syllabus, and then I uh, create a course on WizIQ and then off to Moodle if it's a Moodle course. Oh, you weren't able to see, sorry. All right, so are there any questions? Thank you, Lu wow, you are so fast. There, very good, thank you, Helena. So you see how much you've learned, Helena? Uh, that you can do that so quickly. <laughs> That's great. All right, sometimes we don't realize how much we learn. Uh, we take it for granted. But if you look back to what you knew, you know, whether a year ago, a couple of months ago, and, and you can see the difference. It's amazing, um, you know, but we forget. We forget what it was like. But uh, we were all beginners, and it's really, really scary. You know, I'll, I'll never forget the time that I went into the HTML on my first website about um, 15, 16 years ago, and my heart was beating. I was so scared. Scared of what? Um, now it seems so funny. But uh, yes, beginnings are scary until we get used to things. So questions, comments. If not, uh, please go to the course area for Moodle MOOC 3. Moodle MOOC 3. So we can continue um, the discussions. It's scary, but so exciting. I'm glad. I'm glad it's it's exciting too. Yeah, technology is scary. Definitely scary. There's no doubt about it. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Uh, most things that we're not used to are scary. But um, once you get the hang of it, it's a lot of fun and makes life very, very easy. All right, so I'd like to thank everyone for joining. And um, if there are any questions, let's continue the discussions. Carol, I see your hand is up. I hope um, um, you don't have a question. But if you do, let me know in the chat box. Thank you, Ajare. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget you have uh, eight more days, or a little more, actually. I think you have 10 more days. Uh, and you can continue the Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014, as well as the Moodle MOOC 3. And if you don't make it, you can continue in Moodle MOOC 4. So thank you, everyone. This will be added to Vimeo and YouTube. Bye for now.